You call that thing a ship? God, was this happening? Dan's tightened his grip on the railing, his crew staring holes into him. Were they all about to die? Identify yourself, he responded strongly. That's a human ship of war? <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. He took a deep breath. No one was supposed to be here. HQ had assured him. All they were supposed to do was prepare the planet for the colony ships coming behind them. That was it. A backwater assignment. Now? Oh, God. What had it become now? He continued. This is scout cruiser forward glaive of the Imperial human colonies. This is human territory, and we're under orders of the Imperial Navy to be here. Everyone was on ice. Dan's could hear the spastic click of pins, the angsty squeak of rubber shoes, and the unmistakable chilling sound of shaking breath. He had to take control. Now, I have identified us out of courtesy, not need. I ask you to do the same. The following silence was strangling. It was like the radio held up a mirror to the room, showing them how scattered and small they all seemed. Then, a razzled and cackling laugh rang out over the radio, jabbing at them like a twisting knife. Multiple voices sounded off in the mess, some cajoling and others making whispers, half-audible jokes. All right, all right. The voice was casual and chilling. I mean, we're reading the energy output from your ship and it's... Well, there's just no other way to say this. It's fucking laughable. Laughable. He felt dizzy. Looking around, he could see the same worried, widening glare on everyone else, too. He had to start preparing for the worst. Quickly, he straightened up. He gave a quick glance over to the firepower's captain, rolling his finger to let him know that all guns better be active. He turned to the shield technician, a poor, feeble-looking man who was now falling further into the depths of his small chair. Dan's tensed his jaw and leveled a commanding glare at him. Scared or not, don't fuck this up, kid. He spoke. Listen here. Was he about to do this? What else were his options? He had to take a stance. He had to posture. That was what the strategy heads called it. He had to posture and put on a brave front. Yet as he reached down into the dark bowels of his stomach, trying to find that animal primal anger that was supposed to lurk in us all, all he had was tatters, little small fragments of a man, wisps that sat idly in his hands and stared dumbly at him, as if asking, are you serious? He shook his head in frustration, mustering the words, but not the feelings. I am ordering whoever is on the other end of this channel to identify themselves. It was like air leaving a dying balloon. The line went cold. There wasn't any more laughing, no more light jokes or sounds of movement. It was a long, painful pause, a simmering on the worthlessness of his words. Order? The opposing operator finally spit out the word. <laughs> Let me make something clear to you, forward glaive. Their voice coiled out, like a snaking unraveling and showing off its venom-infused, fang-bearing body of sin. You come from civilization, from lands of control, but you're in the back sectors now. You're in the fucking pits of the universe. Your high towers reach mighty high where you're from. I'm sure of that. But they don't reach wide. So I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it real slow for you. Dan's was tight as a knot. On the bridge, the opposing ship was finally starting to come into view from a distance. Shock and terror rooted the crew into the ground. Quick breaths and exploding heartbeats kept all eyes wide and focused. They all dreamed that they weren't about to see what they knew was coming. The voice continued. In the land of the lawless, there are no orders. There are no commands. There is only God. And God is an ungrateful, violent bitch. God is only concerned with you when you die. God is death. The ship, Danza's heart, sank. The machine across space from them was a sleek, knife-like blade of red. It had spiking, intimidating spears reaching out the front of it. Energy weapons. There was no mistaking what was right in front of them, no running away from it. That 
was a ship of the ruthless Nikari pirates, the most disgusting alien brigands in the galaxy. And this was the voice of the Nikarium captain reading them their mortal rights. And guess what? If God is death, then that makes us her angels. And your commands are nothing to God. You are nothing to God. You are nothing to us. Dan's winced. Listen, no talking now, human. You know the deal now. Give up the ship, and we'll allow a few to live as slaves. If not, death will not welcome you, but she will embrace all. That's not happening. So, you want to meet the face of God? Danza's vision went blurry and black. He struggled to hold himself up on the railing. No one is dying today. If you want to fight... He looked again for his anger, for anything. He wanted to be furious, to be filled with boiling magma. But all he had was... was... fear. You'll get a fight, he squeaked it out. With that ship. The reply sounded almost sad, as if they were speaking to toddlers running into traffic. You would meet God in such a decrepit state? Enough! Dan slung his hand out with wild command. Jensen, all cannons aim and fire! I want hell on that awful red ship! I want hell and all of her sisters on it! Harry, keep the engines hot and make sure we're on our toes! I don't want a single projectile hitting us while our thrusters are still working! Everyone might have been scared, but they were all still ruthlessly trained. The bridge became alive. Movement turned the temperature into a hot, ferving boil. Aides and engineers sprinted from one end to the other. Screams and commands reached across different aspects of the ship. It was alive. It was moving. But Dan's was terrified. Inside everyone's heart, coursing through their veins like poisonous vile, they had fear. They had more than fear. They had wretched, sickening dread. The kind of dread that only the doomed had. The death rattle of battle. He had a crew but it was a crew of corpses. Aww, the voice returned, soft and sarcastic. It was an honorable attempt, but it is we, the living, who invented honor. God has no place, nor want for it. In the end, we care not if you scrap or slave. In these final moments, tell your gods of how they betrayed you and prepare yourself to meet the only divine who ever really tried to speak with you. Death will greet you like it greets all, with apathy. The air collapsed into a desperate frenzy. From his command platform, Dan's began yelling out orders to subcommanders and engineers. Screens blared and lights flashed, and from the transparent glass of the bridge, the distinctive yellow glow of charging weapons began to decorate the opposing ship. It was actually happening. They were really being attacked by pirates. Nothing? The voice on the intercom asked plainly. No surrender? Adrenaline had steeped too far into the veins of the forward glaive for a tame response. Fuck off! Dan's got tired of standing around and ran up to some of the monitor screens, eyes reflecting their frantic glow. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get! If that ship fights then death might actually be impressed for once. They sighed. <sighs> I will forget you. The communications went dark, deafeningly dark. Now it was just the two ships in closing space. Dan spoke quickly. Can we escape? It was a logical, albeit desperate question. Not even close. Perry whipped off sweat from her brow. They'll be in range in seconds, Captain. Seconds? Captain! Another yelled, Our shields have been disabled! Disabled? He spun around, eyes blurry with the chaos. Why are they disabled? I, I, I don't know! All right, he straightened up. All right, well, hell. Hell, then we're just going to go for it. Perry hunched closer to her screens. What, Captain? You heard me, he swallowed hard. No shields, no escape. Perry, and just full forward. Captain, I... Now, Perry! The ship lurched forward and started barreling towards the red knife. From the window, they saw the first flashes of released projectiles. It had begun. Jensen! 
Dan's was locked in now. No escape. No turning away. All he could do was what his training had instilled in him. All guns face portside. Ready to fire. Aye, sir. Barry, turn now. Full blast. Come on. The ship rocked into a hard bank, pulling on all aboard the bridge and sending a few tumbling into the ground. Behind they saw the opening salvos fly behind and miss their rear by seconds. The ground began to shake as their own guns returned around to firing. It was furious, with all gunners located under the bridge and their desperate cries of battle echoing from under the floor. Come on, Dan's yelled. Come on, you bastards! A horrible jolt seized the ship and tossed everyone still standing onto the ground. Lights flickered, and louder alarms blistered the air. Smoke swelled its way into the room and simmered with the hard metallic taste of valuable damage. Dan's shook his head, quickly pushing himself back to a stand. Before the window, he could see various parts of the engine, gun, and hull floating about. They had suffered just one hit, and that alone almost burst them into thousands of pieces. It was the end of the pirate's first salvo. But he could see their guns begin to recharge again, those horrible, pulsing lights, those little eyes from the god of death, blinking and winking at him with careless, almost playful rhythm. He swallowed hard, taking in the somber sight. Captain, Perry crawled back up to her desk, blood dripping from her head. Captain, Captain, what are we going to do? His heart was furious, yet so heavy, it made his legs go numb. He truly was staring at death. The thing before his eyes was the thing that would snuff out his spark. All of it, his family, his legacy, his passions, those little lights would swallow them whole. Barry. He had one more desperate idea. Turn us around. We can't escape those shots. No, but maybe we can get to a place to handle them. He turned down to their map, fingers shaking. Run us into the planet. Don't do the atmosphere entry protocol. We need full speed if we are to escape. Her hands turned dials and screens, quickly turning the ship and careening it towards the rocky ball of a planet. They pushed forward, engines struggling and shaking as the ship made a desperate crawl into increasing atmosphere. Captain, Perry's voice was exhausted, empty. This, I mean it's doomed. Dan's grabbed tightly onto anything that could stabilize him. We already are. The radar screamed with the warning of approaching shots. The bridge window started to vibrate and glow red with re-entry. People screamed as the room's temperature rose to a boil and as its violent shake ramped up. The radar tech yelled, Incoming! Another hit landed. Dan's was thrown to the ground and the ship quaked and convulsed with epic shakes. Hot explosions plumed out. Fiery gas ran into the bridge and consumed the air. Dan saw through the thick smoke and flame that the ship had begun a horrible spin and he could feel it too. Amongst the sizzling sting of heat eating at his skin, his body flailed and tumbled, thrashing him against wall, chair, and person. Even in the awful, cataclysmic tornado, even while getting brutalized and beaten, his thoughts were reasonable and coherent. This is it. Smash! He twisted about and slammed this way and that. I have failed. Those pirates are going to kill every single ship that follows us here. Every colony volunteer, all dead, all my fault, I'd failed. The noise had become so bad that it deafened him. The world fell away. All that existed, all that was, or ever will be, was fire and violence. He didn't even remember anything anymore. This was his whole life, this dying room. The last thing he could grab onto, the final, incredible stake that still bound his heart to the throes of life with, was one more thought, a new thought, an exotic, strange thought. It wouldn't leave him, but stayed in his head like a branded scar. It was the only warm, caring thing that he could take solace in during those final moments. He hung on to it like a baby, hands onto its mom. I'm going to kill those bastards. Everything went dark. Captain? Dan's saw phantoms. Spinning, wisping streaks flew by in the darkness. They snaked around the air, spinning and spinning above him. He wanted to reach out and grab them, to finally tie all of these pieces together and make something of them. Captain, can you hear me? The phantoms stopped. 
They hovered in the air. God, they didn't move, and it made him sick. Suddenly, one started to change. It became red. They all became red, and they started moving again faster than before. In a blink, that was all he saw. Big, red, awful streaks blazing by him. It was fire. It was destruction. It had all come untangled. Captain, please! The red streaks wanted to strangle him. They tied around his neck and started to suffocate him. Dan's wanted to claw at them and make them quit, but he couldn't move. It made him tired. He could almost just let them do it. Let these little fiery demons that had once been his own phantoms finally do him in. It would only be fair. But from the distance, off in between the streaks, he saw something appear. It was nebulous and strange at first. But as it got closer, Dan's could slowly make sense of it. It was the pirate ship, large and awful, looming over his death like it was some sort of show. He could hear them laughing, those awful alien cackles of evil. The sound, it, it infuriated him. It made him twist and writhe. It made him bite and tear. Even his bones shook with fury. He couldn't let those awful things have their way. They'd kill so many innocents. He couldn't let them. No way. It made him furious. He was furious. And his own anger began to consume the wisps attacking him. The streaks didn't halt their passionate twists. But instead, the twist was no longer strangling him. Suddenly, his anger became theirs. And their heat became his. They spun faster and faster, spinning quicker and stronger. His skin started to burn and his eyes water. But they were his. They were his. And they all were furious. He was going to use them, to go back and... Captain, come on! What? Captain! He felt shaking. But this was different. He's dead, let him go. No, he's not, damn it! Dan's knew those voices. Captain, you have to get up, please. Please get up, Captain. He hurt. All of a sudden, his skin and bones became alight with rocking, throbbing agony. The voice whispered, Captain, we can't let it end like this. We can't. The voice cried. No, they couldn't. He wouldn't let it. This wasn't over. He convulsed, suddenly coughing and spasming with electric pain. Blood came out from his lungs, and he was able to carefully bat open his eyes, pulling each one out from the dried blood caking their edges. Captain! It was Jensen, tears still around his eyes and blood everywhere. He's awake! Everyone, he's alive! He's alive! A crowd rushed around. It was a crowd of beaten, bashed, and bloody crew members. They were all exhausted, all terrified, and all looking down at him, shaking with pain. God above, Jensen was knelt down beside him. We thought you were dead. Over half the crew's gone. That's awful, Captain. He coughed again, feeling the blood splatter around in his lungs. In between his wheezes, he met every eye, met the crowd of scared, meek crew members. What stood before him was no longer his crew from earlier. These weren't the academy-trained soldiers and pilots. This wasn't schooled engineers. This was a crowd of trauma victims, children of battle. With every blink, every time he shut his eyes, he saw the wisps, the red banners of his rage. He saw them continue to circle and spin around him. They trusted him. They were beside him. And he knew what had to be done. <clears throat> he tried to speak, body aching. What, Captain? Everyone was watching closely. <clears throat> Come on, Captain. It came out. His first words. The words of a new man. A reborn man. The crying, screaming statement of something grander than what he was before. It came from deep, rallied by his phantoms and bellowing from his blood-riddled lungs. It was apotheosis realized in dejection. Nirvana found in a stewing pond of hatred and blood. He retched his chest up and in clear, rasping words, screamed out to his crew, to the universe. We're going to kill those motherfuckers! The crew looked at him, stunned and voiceless, 
Each one was nothing more than a child at that moment, but he saw it. He saw how they could be changed, how they already had changed. Pieces of clay before the kiln, quivering at the thought of hardening into something real. In each one of them, in every person before him, he saw the red phantoms begin to circle. He saw their rage begin. Disaster! Dan's hobbled on his cane in between the scattered wreckage of their ship. All the dead had already been buried and given their rights, but their faint blood still scarred the various metal scraps strewn across the land. It's a disaster. Jensen walked beside him awkwardly. He had to have one of his arms amputated, and he hobbled lightly to one side as he got used to the weight. It is, sir. All of the crew left had been maimed by the event. Dan's walked through their horrid setup and had no choice but to see their dejected state with honest eyes. We're in bad shape. I, Jensen winced, but I think the supplies dropped off by the preparatory drones over the last few months. I think we can survive the next few years. We can wait until true military convoy has time to come out and save us. Dan stopped, face stolid and cold. No. No? That's not what we're doing. Captain, what? Dan's looked up into space. The planet they were on was soft and gray, and in between the scattered, jutting boulders and cliffs, small bands of flora and ponds of water dotted about. It was an altogether gentle planet, yet her atmosphere held death. Colony ships are going to start arriving in six months, right? Jensen rubbed his hands nervously down the length of his legs. Sadly, sir. They're already at hyperspeed as well. Even if we could, we'd have no way of contacting them about what awaits. He looked up as well, strain upon his brow. I hope they don't have to experience what we did, Captain. I hope it's quick for them. I hope it's quick. Dan's hit him in the back with his cane. Ow! Jensen stumbled forward, rubbing his back and eyes wide with shock. Captain! I won't stand bullshit amongst my crew anymore! His whacking hand had caused a collection of eyes to fall on them. Dan spoke quickly and hard. This position we're in down here, the state we're in, don't let it fool you. Don't let any of it fool you. Jensen was awestruck. What? It's about damn time I told you all what's going on around here. It's about time we set some things straight. The hobbling gang of distraught survivors came in closer, and Dan's walked up to a small hill where he could be seen by everyone. He breathed deep, his lungs wheezing as air whisked in between his scarred flesh. When I woke up three days ago, I told you all that we'd kill those fuckers floating somewhere above us. His eyes scanned the crowd, watching as the wisps and phantoms that now never left his vision weaved in and out of the people before him. I want you all to understand, to know, deep in your heart, that was not a lie. We are going to kill those sons of bitches. Captain. An older, grayed woman spoke up from the crowd. She'd been in the military for years, and her eyes held the wisdom of a soldier who had never been anything but that. A realistic, hardened fighter. With all due respect, how the hell are we supposed to do that? Dan smirked. How about we start with why? He raised his cane to the sky. You know what happened up there. She replied curtly. We got fucked up. I. He nodded. We got fucked up. And because we got fucked up, hundreds of people are heading straight towards their death as we speak. In six months' time, if something isn't done, if we just sit here and do nothing, then hundreds of innocent will meet the same fate. We were for some reason spared. People murmured, shuffling on their feet and looking uneasy. Dance didn't let up. He looked at them, every one of them. Listen to what I'm saying. He started to move about, the energy infecting his broken body. Listen to me! We do nothing! People die! People fucking die! There was a spark. The phantoms quivered and pulsed around a few of the listeners. An ember was starting to form before him. He just had to maintain it, had to feed it. We failed up there, but failure is not the problem. We fail... Everything fails. His face turned to a sneer. But now, now we were spared. We were spared and given a choice. A choice! He turned to a roar, 
anger rising in him with the surety and power of ocean tides. Our choice is to rectify our injustice, to rectify our pain and fear. Hundreds soon die, and we were cursed to watch. We were tasked, challenged to try. We were given the opportunity of a lifetime. He was breathing heavy, sweat dripping down from his brow. As I walk, as the baited, painful breaths leave my fucked up lungs, every single cell in my body, every ounce of me that is living and still fighting, it rages, it rages, and it screams. It screams out to the stars, to the planets, and to the universe. It screams out to you all, to my crew. It screams and screams and demands one thing, one simple thing. They were alight, every one of them, every eye, every soul. They all had phantoms. They all had anger and rage. Their kindling had erupted and become fires. Dan's nodded, proud of what they were becoming, proud of the seeds that were sprouting. That is vengeance, my brave crew. We demand, we do not ask for it. We demand vengeance. He took a deep breath body shaking from his exertion. So to answer the original question, how? I don't know, but that doesn't concern me right now. The only thing I care about now is what I have to do, what must be, in my crew. That is clear. The following months were spastic. Time was highly valued, and the crew of amputees, burn victims, and psychological wrecks all dumped their collective lives into the process. At its core, it was an engineer's problem how to take the scraps, various prearranged supplies, and natural resources and use them to launch a fighting machine back out into space. But beyond the core, in its soul, it was a revenge problem. There up there, Dan's would hobble among the effort, walking stick carrying his crooked body and voice ringing out in hoarse shrills. There up there! And they think they've done a sin. It was muddy, dirty, and greasy. Everything was used, wood from trees, cloth from what was supposed to be beds. They had a cornucopia of supplies that the settlers were supposed to use to build a nation. Now they were using it to build a killing machine. The ship quickly began to take on new form. No longer was it a sleek naval scout cruiser. The edges were harsh. Its walls were patchwork, welded messes inventive guns, horrific traps, grotesque tricks, all of it piled onto a poor, helpless hunk of metal. They made a chimera, a destructure hurricane that had picked up anything dangerous. It hurt the eyes to look at, burned the soul to witness, but to the crew, to those fury-imbued animals, it was an avatar for hope. It won't be the same. Dance had gathered the crew around a large swath of dirt. We must be clever, vicious. A young gunner named Sarah spoke up, her eyes still covered with a patch and light weeping pus. We must be vicious, Captain. Everyone nodded. Dan's fire didn't just find them and bring them to a burn. It was creating something greater now. Together, they were all crafting a spirit beyond what he alone could have grasped. They were elevating each other. It can't be typical. Jensen's didn't look as small as he had before. His eyes were bright and deep. They seemed to swallow the light in front of him. They're obviously well equipped for that. I have an idea. Sarah had been heavily involved in the early ship design process. Now they were all about to find out why. But it will cost. Dan shook his head. No such thing. (coughs) He coughed up some blood and tried to keep his back straight. What payment haven't we already paid? We're dead down here already. Up there? It will be our ghosts fighting for survival. No cost is too great to save those coming. Everyone nodded. They were all on the same page. Everyone understood what it was they were attempting to do. They all knew what might await them in space. But now, they'd been liberated from that fear. Their hearts no longer beat blood. But instead, it was now raw, ruthless passion. Go ahead, Sarah. Dan's nodded. Tell us this plan. His eyes were closed. Before him, the phantoms, the red wisps, they waved and batted the air. 
They no longer circled, but instead obeyed. They rested before his eyes like the dogs of war, restless and biting at the air. He nodded his hands, as if he was grabbing at the fabric they were all born from, and he took a deep breath. Today, he opened his eyes, yelling to the crew. Today we create salvation! It'd been six months, and it was a rabid, dogged six months. They had crafted, plotted, schemed, and prepared. Some died from long-lasting wounds. Others healed well, but they were all still different. Dan saw them. He saw them all grit their teeth and shuffle on their feet. They were acolytes to their own prophecies, children to the same rage that had found him at the bottom of the well. Not a crew of naval officers, but a tribe of warriors, revived from the dead. The settlers could arrive within the next few days, so it is now or never. We fight now or we never fight again. We fight now or we die forever. We die a death that we would deserve. He raised his cane to the sky. So we must lay claim to these stars. We must protect those we are sworn to protect. And we must fight. Fight, goddammit. Those are our options. Die or fight. They cheered, yelling and screaming into the looming sky. When we landed here, we weren't humans. He shook his head, eyes down. We were mice. We were snakes. We didn't deserve the power we commanded. He gripped his cane tight, tears welling at the edges of his face, memories of death, failure, and destruction crashing into his mind. But upon this planet, we found our humanity. We found our fight, our pride, and my dear friends and family. Now, we will earn what we found. We will show those bastards in the sky exactly what mankind is. We'll show them what a dedicated, angry human is capable of. They cheered and cheered. They raged and writhed. The sky twinkling, blinking stars looked over them looked down on the fields of thrashing apes, and it knew fear. It found terror in watching one of its children become great and rise to its full potential. Man was coming, and man was angry. Status? Dan's was still, though the ship shook with awful violence and noise. All seems fine, the engine lead said from behind. Dan smiled. Don't lie. It's horribly fucked, sir. Engine two and three seem ready to give out. We've lost the engine guard covering them. And, quite frankly, I think our right wing looks ready to give out. That's better, but I think we're going to make it, sir. Of course we are. He breathed deep, feeling the color and light change as it landed on his skin. I'm not worried. They knew the launch would be the hardest part, but still, even among the horrible, desperate rattle and rolling of the ship, everyone was calm. It was like monks sat in the hull, and everyone did their jobs, eyes and hands steady. Gunny! Dan spoke with simple pride, wisping between every word. How's the shield? Bootleg, sir. He heard the old man spit onto the floor. <laughs> Bootleg as fuck, but still live. Good. He saw the silk black void of space open up to him. It's time then, ladies and gentlemen. It's finally time! The ship found its way into orbit, though its engine shut off no less than three times in the process of trying to get it stable. From there it cruised, on the prowl for its old friend. All right, Leia. Make sure you're ready to radio back as soon as we see. Aye, Captain. Everyone, stay alive! Stay alive and take it all in! Soon enough, off far, far in the distance, something came up on their radar. Dan's leaned back into his seat and let out a satisfied, relaxed sigh. <sighs> Finally, a staticky buzz overtook the ship's speakers. Then, in between some clicks and noise, a familiar cold voice appeared. My, oh my, we'd been waiting for the rest of you to arrive. Those supply drones were a dead giveaway that... Wait a minute, what is that? Hello again, old friend. Dan's smiled. I've missed you. The reply took a long time. There was some scattered, mumbled speech happening in the radio background. 
Then the voice returned, obviously confused. Who the hell is this? You know exactly who I am. Impossible! We watched you all break into a hundred pieces entering the atmosphere. I, I you did. Danza's heart began to swell with passionate energy. Yet here we are. I, I don't, what in the stars is that you're driving? It looks horrible. Oh, this little guy? He patted his metal dashboard with a satisfied smirk. You complained before about our ship not being what you expected. I thought this time I'd give you a more real taste of human engineering. Enough of this, the voice was angry now. I don't know what you think you're doing here, but we're happy just to kill you again. Whoa, whoa, my friend. Do you not realize what you're saying right now? Don't you understand what is happening? Shut up! We've had enough of your games. Captain, a voice spoke up quietly from behind Dan's. It's time. You have approximately one minute. He nodded, drinking in the moment and closing his eyes. From behind his eyelids, he could still see the pirate cruiser. Its red, sleek body never left his mind. He saw it eek closer, and its weapons begin to glow. He saw its crew and their disciplined, hardy effort to kill him. It was all laid out before him, just as he'd imagined for months, just like he'd always hoped. My friends. His voice was soft, almost caring. You've already killed us. We have met your god of death. We saw our king, and we have returned from the afterlife. Don't you understand? Your own god didn't want to deal with humans. We are here for a reason, for a purpose. Blasphemy! We looked into the eyes of the great deity, into the one you say rules over the whole galaxy. We looked into those eyes, and we saw them blink. Prepare to be blown away. You called yourselves the angels of death. You called yourselves death's helpers. Well... He opened his eyes, now staring directly at the real, charging ship of pirates. It's time you finally met the devils of death. Fright Red appeared from the planet below. There were dozens of them, all growing larger and larger. What is this? The pirate yelled. Death. Dozens of ships exploded out of the atmosphere. They were tiny, solo pilot machines, horrific and gangly. They were all different all looking to barely function, but every one of them still had a gun. They had a gun and a surplus of rage. Across their hulls, they had painted splattered pieces of art. Some showed skulls, some showed scantily clad women or men, others showed images of the pirate ship on a spike or exploded. They were all terribly, eye-wateringly crass. Yahoo! Sarah blasted across the radio. Good to finally meet you fuckers again! A storm of violence broke out. The pirate ship tried to quickly move its guns to target the new various targets, but instead ended up missing most, or trying to aim for more than one at a time. The crew seemed caught off guard, unable to coordinate who to go at. Launch! Dan's waved his hands. Launch it all! It could hardly even be called missiles. Four tiny darting machines clinked off their ships, all loaded to the absolute brim with explosives. They began streaking off towards their foe. Give them hell, guys, he leaned back. Give them hell. All around, shots landed. Some humans exploded. Then parts of the pirate ship broke off. Then small missiles or laser shots took off random chunks of other ships. It was chaos, a tornado of wreckage and violence. Jensen's ship finally got shot down, with his final words being a proud, careless curse to the pirates. Then Sarah's junker exploded, but not before she emptied every single piece of ammunition she had. Eventually, it was just Danza's ship and the pirates, both horribly beaten and broken. Scraps and great hunks of metal floated all around, and both surviving ships were frozen for a moment, staring across the battlefield of death in a rare moment of stillness. Enough! the pirate yelled over the radio, obviously exhausted and distraught. This is over! Fire at them! Fire it all! But nothing happened. A collection of seconds went by, and Dan's and his crew just watched the smoking, half-torn apart ship idle. What? Come on! Come on! I think all your weapons are destroyed, old friend. 
Dan's was bleeding from his forehead. A couple of shots had landed and thrashed them around. That's funny. We're also out of ammo. Quiet! Be quiet! You will die before this is all said and done! Oh, I'm sure. I have no doubt you can get something functional soon enough. He stretched, letting out a strained groan. But I don't think we can let that happen. This has been ridiculous. We will put an end to it. You humans, you are disgusting creatures. We will finally wipe you out. Dan's looked back at what was left of his crew. The few scattered people all had the same look. They all stared at him with simple, elegant understanding. Everyone was ready. They had all been ready for months now. Engines full speed ahead. What? Your shield's down. There wasn't a single quiver in his voice. Not a hiccup or jump of rhythm. Just pure, confident bravado. And your engines don't seem too sharp right now either. Their ship rocked forward, gaining speed and heading straight for the distraught pirates. Stop this! Stop this now! You'll kill us both! What, are you crazy? Yes. They closed in, arcing closer and closer. Don't you understand that now? Haven't I made this clear? Stop! Your god is death, and only humans are crazy enough to meet death eye to eye. No! Don't worry. She'll meet you like she meets everyone. With apathy! You bastards! Dan's gave one last proud, slow smile. Eyes closed. He saw the wisps, and now they were white. They were completely still, and all of them tied into one great, expensive blanket. A huge cloth of flapping, gentle spirits. Finally, he'd made something of them. The rage had become his, and he made purpose of his passion, meaning from his fight. It was a pleasure. The ships crashed into each other, exploding into one fantastic collection of scraps and viscera. It was quick, brutal, and hapless. No one survived, and the smattering of metal chunks just floated carelessly into their scattered directions. It was over. The rage, the battle, the vengeance. All of it ended with that crash. All of it came to a close, a final crescendo. When the settlers finally did arrive, and when they saw the chaos floating in the atmosphere and their supplies scattered and used, they knew. They understood. Only humans could grasp what had happened there. Only man understood their own depths. They saw the chaos and pieced it together in that orbit around that planet. Mankind commanded death, and death obeyed. The crew of the forward glaive received full honors, and her song was sung across the stars. Heroes, all of them, and true, hot-blooded humans. Dan's got a statue on the new planet, and under it, a simple phrase was engraved. To never give up, and to take your fate and make it your destiny. Mankind prevailed here. <laughs>